Hi, my name is Shatar. This is my first attempt at making a serious build showcase. I want to stress that this is not a fully fledged guide. This is more aimed towards giving a player foundation to build a similar character. As such, take this video as inspiration rather than proof that this is the way to make a build of this style. I will be playing a serious non pinnacle boss video in the background. This was done in Hardcore Ancestor 3.22. It's also coincidentally my first serious kill. Please excuse me almost dying in two occasions. Introduction Flamewood support was added in 3.22 Ancestor League, and it's my opinion one of the more interesting supports to come out in recent leagues. The support gives the totem a skill, Avenging Flame. I will be referring to Avenging Flame rather than Flamewood when talking about the support, so do not get that confused. Avenging Flame deals fire damage based on the supported totem's life. Avenging Flame triggers when the totem gets hit. This specific build is Ignite based, which is one of the archetypes the Flamewood does best. But I want to mention quick that this is highly reliant on the insane life of a Volnacest of Wadji. If this is ever changed, this version will suffer a lot. More detailed in the gym chapter. This build is on top of a Chieftain base, which I felt was almost designed to be an obvious choice. I still think this build is novel enough to not all be obvious though. I want to warn anybody that is thinking about playing an Avenging Flame build. It is by even my standards too jank. Some bosses can be done and some contents is needlessly more difficult due to the fact that the totem needs to be hit. I do not expect this to change and as such Avenging Flame will always be subpar. Summary. I will give a short TLDV. Build is jank. Damage scaling with Volances of Wachief is good. If Volances of Wachief gets lower life, the build becomes much worse. There is nice with Barracks Bur Respite and him the core explosions. Single target is workable. Defenses are sufficient to tank some bigger hits. Gems. I will start off talking about gem selection. Some people noted in 3.21 Crucible, Volances of Wachief has a very large health total. On the current character with level 23 Volans as the War Chief, it has 33k life, 45k at level 26. Compared to the lowly 5k of the level 23 non Volans as the War Chief, this is abnormally high and might change in the future. Until it does, this is probably the only logical choice for Ignite based Avenging Flame builds. The main links will then be Volans as the War Chief and Flamewood. The rest of the links being as high damage as possible. I believe, I believe this setup to be deadly ailments, burning damage, swift affliction, and empower. Eagle eyed viewers might see that I do not have empower in my links. This is due to dying with my level 3 empower on another character instead of life tap is used. This also means that the totem is planned to be level 26, but in the showcase it's level 23. It's obvious, obviously possible to get a level 5 Awakened in power with a level 21 Vol Gem, while the level 21 Vol Gem is possible. If you want to spend the money on level 5 Awakened in power, I suggest looking at other builds. Another important skill setup for this build is the Arcanist Brand setup. This build uses the very powerful Defiled Forces node located above which. I will talk about this node in the Passive Tree chapter. The Arcanist brand setup will refresh the current highest ignite on the target by cursing the target with flammability. This is one of the parts of the build that needs more refining. Ideally, you want to add in Flame Surge into this link as well. But this build gets a lot of faster ignite sources, and as such I noticed that the ignite seems to fall off when flammability is cast every second trigger. Arcanist brand links are as follows. Arcanist brand, flammability, life tap. Faster casting and increased duration. Life tap is important as triggers the mana intensive. Faster casting helps refresh the ignite a lot, makes the initial cast faster. Increased duration makes us not have to refresh the brand as much. Other links, as is, can be seen in the POB linked in the description. Gearing. There is four main pieces and a few guidelines for the rest of the gear I want to bring up in this chapter. Weapon. The weapon used in this build is quite unique, even if it's a rare piece. It is the first time I have ever used the mod level of socketed melee gems. In this build, this mod gives a lot of damage as it increases the level of Volnacest of Wachief. 
This together with level of socketed gems, it is possible to achieve level 26. The most expensive part being a brick level 3 in power. I don't think this build will get popular enough to have an effect on the market. But due to the current market dynamics, it is very cheap to get a high dot multi fractured on a two handed weapon. The best base would be a lion sword, which would give you 50 strength and 50 dex in implicit. Other options are also available. The important consideration is to have a base that only has attack modifiers on the prefixes, and the only available gem mods being socketed gems and socketed melee gems. The way I crafted my mace was by using alterations until I hit a plus 2 to melee gems. Regal into any medium to high resistant. If, if it's chaos, keep it. If it's any other, change it to fire. Craft cannot craft attack modifiers and exalt slam on socketed gems. Remove the meta mod and craft fired up multi. This craft is pretty easy, um, but it does require access to the meta mod. Rings. This build uses two unique rings, one being bar Barracks for Spite. This is the key aspect to achieve any kind of clear for this build. Spreads ignites to nearby enemies on kill. This spreads both the ignite from the Avenging Flame skill and also ignites done by Hinekora. Hinekora ignites being some of the biggest ignites I have seen. Other ring being Replica Ambuic. This is a large damage increase representing about 50% more damage. This requires some build consideration. The ignite duration needs to be long enough so that it can be refreshed by defiled forces. This is the reason why it was not possible to have flame search in the Arcanist brand link, as it would take uh, too long in between refreshes. Given Emberwake is so much damage, this is preferred. Body armor. As 34% of other chieftains in Assassin's League, this build uses Cloak of Flames. It serves three uses. It gives a lot of fire res, which on chieftain gives a lot of effective resistances. It gives a ton of physical and physical dot mitigation. Cloak of Flame is one of the only sources which converts dot damage into another damage type. And it gives a lot of ignite duration, which helps to alleviate the 90% reduced ignite duration on Replica Emberwake. I want to note here that increases and reduction in the ignite duration does not matter once the ignite is refreshed by default forces, as the ignite will always be 4 seconds in this case. Despite the risk of spreading misinformation, as I have not tested this, I think that faster ignite still affects the duration of the refreshed ignite, just to also detail that in direction. These three items are mandatory for my current setup, and I think uh, they are all generally good, good ideas. Other gear. The other gear can be seen in the POB. Not perfect, and I snagged most of it from the other chieftains I did early in the league. The key features are physical damage taken as mods on the helmet, plus 2 to level of socketed AoE gems and gloves, damage over time multiplier and projectile speed on amulet. We want extra levels of purity of fire to get another max virus. Your character gets it from gloves, which is the easiest source. Projectile speed might sound weird, but there is a travel duration in between the totem getting hit and the projectile landing. Small amount of projectile speed is nice to make the build feel a little bit better. Other good mods are high fire res, life, and life regeneration. Keep in mind that any piece of gear with one high res can be changed to fire resistant with Harvest, making gearing a chieftain super easy. Trash gear can achieve way over over capped Ellie res capped chaos and a good amount of life regeneration even with two with a two hander and three unique pieces. As a dream. I will not go into detail about the dream. There is no crazy complicated stuff going on. We travel to efficient damage, we get 200 percent life and mostly get max rest for defense. As tattoos are removed next link, it is important to note that the current character gets 2% increased effect of auras from tattoos which grants us plus one max virus. There might be a more elegant fix for this, but a small cluster with in introspection could fill that role. It takes two additional points, but getting the max res is more important than some of the other nodes. The build gets a lethal pride jewel setup. This can give a multitude of good nodes. Current character really only gets some physical damage taken ass from it. 
It's, po it's possible to spec into Tempid by War if one gets a lethal pride with Rakiata. They're really only good in a few boss fights with Pen, like the Shaper. But it really, um, but I feel in general, it's not necessary. Conclusions. I think the damage scaling is sufficient enough to give it a pass. But this is only because of the insane life total of Volnesis to Warchief Totem in Defiled Forces. The life of Volnesis to Warchief is lowered, or the Defiled Forces somehow gets changed, I think it's necessary to reduce the defenses of the build to get more damage, and that would probably make the defenses not pass for my standards. Defenses also get a pass. The combination of taking a lot of physical damage as elemental and getting high max res is a basic but effective combination. Physical mitigation could still be better, but I think a redesign of the defenses of the character is needed for that. Dropping Cloak of Flame for a Lightning Coil or pure armor base is not possible. Due to needing the Ignite Duration and dropping Replica Ember Wake would make the damage killing much worse. Recovery is good, as we get life regeneration on some pieces of gear and get a decent amount of regen from the tree. Clear is decent with Respite and then the Core Explosions. It's important to not summon the totem too much, as if a totem gets oversummoned and it had launched a projectile, that projectile will not explode. Single target is surprisingly strong if a boss has a maximum of 2 to 3 faces and can re reliably hit the Volan system Wuji. One issue I have encountered is that melee totems seem to not have a non-zero chance of evading enemy hits. Melee attacks will often miss. It's important to put the limited use of vol skill in AoEs or locations you know an enemy will hit it. Once the ignite is up, keep it up with the brand. Ending words. The full series fight and the basic clear video will be available in the description. Sadly, I did not record any audio for the series fight. I want to thank you for watching this build inspiration video as I like to call them. If you have any questions, I stream daily-ish starting around 2100 UDC. I will hopefully be able to make more of these videos in the future. Focus on making builds that interest me and Compared to other streamers or content creators, my builds will most likely suck. I do not find it fun to minimax or optimize a build. I find it fun in improving or playing Chang.